In the last section, the diaphragm spring will be introduced as finite element body. And the simple spring element in relation with the coupler element will be replaced. First, the geometry of the diaphragm should be imported via a step file. We go for File, Import, change the filter to Step, look for Step Data and open it. As the used reference frame in the CAD software was the same as before, it fits right to the assembly. For meshing, the diaphragm should be activated. Then with a the right click, we could choose Mesh in this pop-up menu to enter the measure. In the measure, we use the mesh icon in the above ribbons, select our target body, switch the mesh type to shell 4, the property is automatically set and in the mesh option we set a maximum size of 3 mm and a minimum size of 1 mm. Then we could mesh our surface. After the mesh is done, we check our data in the database, the material property. Here we use the data for steel. Density is OK and we set the Poisson ratio to 0.3. Everything should be applied and as well we check the properties here in the p-shell element. Because here we have to adjust the thickness of our shell elements. It should be 2.25 mm. Everything must be applied again. Now all parameters are checked and the next steps for finishing the mesh must be executed. As this diaphragm is a real finite element part and not only a spring element, it could be connected to other parts like the pressure plate and the release bearing by contacts and constrained by boundary conditions. For contacts, so-called patch sets need to be generated in the contact area. To do so for the contact to the pressure blade, we choose Patch from the above ribbons. In the dialog, we select Add Remove. And in the first step, we select All Elements. Then we check Remove and change the selection rule from the default rectangle to circle. To remove the not used inner elements. And with a right click we could finish this operation. Here we check the normal of the patch set. We have to turn it a bit and see that the normal direction is right here for the contact to the pressure blade. Then we could apply this dialog and change back our view. For the contact to the release bearing, it is working in the same way. We choose Patch, Add Remove, and as we do not want to remove any elements but add, we have to activate this option and select some inner elements. With a right click we finish the operation and check the normal direction of the patch. We see it's in the wrong way, therefore we switch it. With OK 
we create the patch and we change back to the right view and we are done with all patch sets. To constrain this finite element body, boundary condition is used from the upper ribbons. It's working similar to the patch sets. We select add remove, zoom in the upper half of the mesh and select some nodes. First some more. Now we change the option again to remove and remove the inner nodes. With a right click we could finish this operation and as only the X direction should be fixed all other options should be deselected. With OK we apply the boundary conditions to the mesh and then we are done in the measure and with exit we come back to the whole model. Back in the model assembly we are now able to create our contact elements. We activate flexible in the pull down menus. Under contact we find the surface to flexible surface contact. The first surface, the rigid one, we will get from the release bearing. The flexible one from the patch set of the diaphragm. For the second contact, this has to be repeated. The rigid surface we get from the pressure plate. And the flexible one from the corresponding patch set of the diaphragm. Now the contacts are done and visible in the database. And we have to modify the parameters of them. The first contact between release bearing and diaphragm. You see these yellow boxes, which are borders around the contact area of both contact partners. In contact surface, we could reduce the size at maximum penetration from 10 to 1 mm. It's the same for the flexible surface. But here as well the option of the thickness should be switched to original. To get the thickness information from the property of the mesh we did in a former session. In the characteristic tab we change the contact stiffness to 1000 newton per millimeter. The damping coefficient should be 1e-2. The dynamic friction 0.25. A static friction 0.3 and we have to adjust as well the transition velocities of the friction law. That's all for this contact and we could apply it. The second contact should be modified as well. The contact between diaphragm and pressure plate. We reduce for both surfaces the maximum penetration for the flexible surface, we set as well the option for the thickness to original. In the characteristic tab, the contact stiffness should be stiffer, 10,000 newton per millimeter, and the damping coefficient is 0.1. Friction is not implemented here, and we could apply this dialog. At last, the coupler and the diaphragm spring element should be set to inactive. As the diaphragm is now introduced 
has a full flexible body, a finite element body. Some color changes and signs to see the rotation in a better way could tune up your model. But now the whole model could be simulated again to see the results from the beginning of these video sessions.